Laryngeal nerve palsy usually refers to the palsy of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. The recurrent laryngeal nerve is responsible for both abduction, opening, and adduction, closing of the vocal cord. Therefore, recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy is also called vocal cord paralysis and may be the first presentation of severe pathology such as cancer. People often present with hoarseness, coughing, and exertional dyspnea. In this video, we will focus on the laryngeal nerves. Understanding the anatomy of the laryngeal nerve is important in understanding the pathologies that may arise. The vagus nerve runs a complex course. The vagus nerve exits the brainstem and descends and supplies, innervates many organs, including the heart, lungs, and gastrointestinal tract. The right and left vagus nerve descends along the trachea behind the common carotid artery. As the vagus nerve descends down, it gives off a few branches. The superior laryngeal nerve, which branches into the external and internal laryngeal nerves. The external laryngeal nerve supplies the cricothyroid muscle, the tuning fork of the larynx, responsible for raising pitch. The internal laryngeal nerve is responsible for sensation of the larynx above the vocal cords. The right vagus nerve tracks down and gives off another branch called the right recurrent laryngeal nerve, which loops under the right subclavian artery, turning back in a cephalic direction to run in the tracheoesophageal groove. Similarly, the left vagus nerve descends and gives off another branch, the left recurrent laryngeal nerve, which loops under the aortic arch, turning back in a cephalic direction. The right and left recurrent laryngeal nerve supplies all the muscles of the larynx except the cricothyroid muscle, which is supplied by the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve. The recurrent laryngeal nerve is responsible for the abduction, the opening, and the adduction, closing, of the vocal cords. The left and right recurrent laryngeal nerve is also responsible for sensation of the larynx below the vocal cords. Additional motor function of the lower pharynx and upper esophagus is supplied by direct pharyngeal branches of the vagus and recurrent laryngeal nerve. Knowing the anatomy of the laryngeal nerve, we can now appreciate that if the recurrent laryngeal nerve or the superior laryngeal nerve is injured, people can develop hoarseness of the voice. The reason is because the superior and recurrent laryngeal nerves supply the intrinsic muscles of the larynx, important in vocal cord movement. Further, when injured, the nerves will affect sensation below or above the vocal cords. The left laryngeal nerve is likely to be paralyzed twice as frequently as the right because of its close proximity or relationship to many intrathoracic structures. Remember, the left recurrent laryngeal nerve is the one that loops under the aortic arch, and so it's close to the heart and the lungs. But the pathophysiology of the laryngeal nerve palsies is a bit more complicated. Let's focus on recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy specifically now. Here we are looking at a person who is about to be intubated. Now this is the view of the vocal folds we will be focusing on. Under normal circumstances, the vocal cords meet in the midline during phonation. On inspiration, they move away from each other. They return toward the midline on expiration, leaving a small opening between them. Remember, the recurrent laryngeal nerve is responsible for abduction, opening, and adduction, closing, of the vocal cords. So technically, it opens the vocal cords during inspiration, abduction, and closes them during phonation and expiration, adduction. The abductor fibers, the opening fibers, are more vulnerable, and moderate trauma causes a pure abductor paralysis. 
severe trauma causes both abductor and adductor fibers to be affected. Therefore, recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy can be incomplete, affecting only the abductor, the opening fibers, or complete, affecting both abductor and adductor fibers, the opening and closing fibers. Recurrent laryngeal nerve palsies can also be unilateral or bilateral, affecting one side or affecting both vocal cords. Incomplete unilateral palsy, which means really unilateral abductor palsy, both cords meet in midline on phonation because the adductors, the closing fibers, closes the vocal cords and it's still possible on the affected side. However, only the normal cord abducts, opens during inspiration. For example, here is unilateral right abductor palsy. The right vocal cord does not open with inspiration because the right recurrent laryngeal nerve is injured. However, on phonation, the adductor works, so the vocal cords can close, even on the affected side. In the case of complete unilateral palsy of the recurrent laryngeal nerve, both abductor and adductor are affected. On phonation, the normal unaffected cord crosses the midline to meet its paralyzed counterpart, appearing to lie in front of the affected cord. For example, here, the left side is normal, and on phonation, it crosses midline to the completely paralyzed right vocal cord. On inspiration, the unaffected cord moves to full abduction, whereas the affected right vocal cord is unable to open and is unable to meet midline due to loss of the closing fibers as well, the adductors. Incomplete bilateral palsy, which means damage to abductor fibers bilaterally. Here, the adductors, the closing fibers, draw the cords towards each other. During inspiration, abduction, opening, does not occur, and the cords, the vocal cords, do not open. When you cannot open your vocal cords during inspiration, this results in severe respiratory distress. Again, during phonation, the vocal cords stay closed. On the other hand, with a complete bilateral palsy, both the abductors and adductor fibers are affected on both sides. This means that the adductor fibers do not close the vocal cords fully because they're unable to. And on inspiration, the vocal cords sort of open. A reasonable glottic opening exists. On phonation, again, the vocal cords do not close properly because of bilateral loss of adductors, the closing fibers. Thus, bilateral incomplete palsy is more dangerous than bilateral complete palsy. Damage to the external branch of the superior laryngeal nerve or to the superior laryngeal nerve trunk causes paralysis of the cricothyroid muscle, the tuning fork of the larynx, resulting in hoarseness that improves with time because of increased compensatory action of the opposite muscle. When someone presents with hoarseness, it's important to think about injury to the laryngeal nerves. However, it's important to take a step back and remember other differential diagnoses of hoarseness, which can be divided into organic or functional causes. Functional causes include overuse or abuse of the voice. Organic causes of hoarseness are things such as cancer invading the laryngeal nerves. A good proportion of laryngeal nerve palsy is due to cancer, which can be of the thyroid, esophagus, the bronchus, or hypopharynx, and these can cause compression of the laryngeal nerve, causing hoarseness. Another cause is iatrogenic injury to the laryngeal nerve during surgery. 
Laryngeal nerve palsy is not uncommon after operations, including thyroidectomies, parathyroidectomies, esophageal and pharyngeal surgery. Again, these operations are performed in very close proximity to the laryngeal nerve. Other causes include neck trauma from any cause such as motor vehicle accident resulting in laryngeal nerve injury, degenerative neural disorders such as motor neuron disease, and demyelinating disease such as multiple sclerosis. Another cause are, of course, brain stem strokes as well as cerebral strokes. Bilateral vocal cord paralysis is usually a result of iatrogenic things secondary to neck surgery or tracheal intubation, which may accidentally compress the laryngeal nerve. Bilateral vocal cord paralysis, either incomplete or complete, is also seen in many neurological disorders such as motor neuron disease, diabetic neuropathy, myasthenia gravis, and strokes. I hope you enjoyed this video on laryngeal nerve palsy. Thank you for watching.